On today's episode of Gathering the Kings. Me and my husband were trying for a family. I was working full time yeah. in a call center and I was finally pregnant in my safe zone of pregnancy. I waited till that safe zone to tell my job. And in return, they told me I had two days to give birth and then I would have to go back to work. Which is absolutely insane, right? And borderline illegal. I immediately quit. And I started looking for ways to work from home because I was about to have this brand new baby. And I wanted to be there to take care of that child for as long as it may need me, especially as a very high risk. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Back here with you today with another queen on the stage. My good friend at this point, because we this is not the first time that we've met, Natalie Guzman. Welcome to the stage, Queen Natalie. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing, Chaz? Wonderful. You know, it was funny because we've had several interactions. In fact, you've actually been a part of one of our uh, roundtable masterminds just a month or so ago. But... I was just learning right before we hit the record button that you also have a podcast, which I love, and you are crushing it. And so maybe that'll come out here in the story a little bit, but tell us what kind of business, or in this case, businesses that you have. Yeah, so I have a virtual assistant agency that I started in 2015, and then I also have, that's called NG Virtual Assistant, and then I have Nadora, which is a software for entrepreneurs to create unlimited websites, funnels, automations, email marketing, and pretty much anything to create a digital business. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of opportunity with the listeners here today. Almost everybody listening needs some sort of software to help them with digital marketing, as well as a virtual assistant or two or five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were, in fact, it was a, one of our, our big topics last roundtable that you were a part of with Gathering the Kings. And it was cool to have you there because one of the guys in the hot seat was talking about his kind of virtual assistant um, methodology. And he's, I think, got four or five in place now. But you kind of take a slightly different uh, approach to virtual assisting, which actually was exactly what this member in, in our group needed. Give us a second just on a little bit how you do it differently. Yeah, so that number, one of you know his pain points was that he was feeling overwhelmed talking to all the different virtual assistants. And so what my company does is we assign you a project manager and they will meet with you however often you'd like, so weekly, monthly, whatnot. And they're the ones that keep track of all the to-dos, the timeline. They will update you using our project management tools. And then they will assign the tasks out and make sure that it's quality work. It's doing exactly how our clients envision. And so that way it's really a built in team for your business. Yeah. I love that. And and some people listening right now might not have any virtual assistants. Maybe they, I'm sure that they've heard the term. It might feel a little bit like out there a little bit. Like, what is that? Does that, does that mean I'm hiring somebody from another country? All, although possible we have, we have a virtual assistant from the Philippines as well but it doesn't always have to be. Give us just a little bit of like, what is a virtual assistant? Because then I want to tie it together to what you just said, which is if you have this, then you probably need this at some point. What What is a virtual assistant? Yeah, so a virtual assistant is just kind of what it sounds like, right? It's a personal assistant that's virtual, but they can help you with so many things in your business. Honestly, virtual assistant is such a broad term, right? Yeah. It just means that they work from home in their workspace. They're also business owners themselves because they're contractors. They're not W-2 employees. If you have the right VA, you have one that is really skilled in whatever you're hiring them for. Whereas in my team, we have all sorts of skills. We've got copywriters, graphic designers. Just think about anything you need in your business. A virtual assistant can pretty much assist with. So scheduling, email management, calendar management, we've even created websites, funnels, automations, graphic design, flyers, marketing materials, 
basically anything and everything you can think of. We've helped in an, over a hundred industries so far. Wow. So we have people in the tree industry, we have house cleaners, we have business coaches and so much more. And so it's really a diverse term. And if you find the right fit, you can definitely find someone that's going to really help further your business, which is the point of hiring a virtual assistant is either right. to create more money or to save you time so you can create that yeah. money. And so that's I love that. So the examples that you just gave, the tree cleaning, the business coach, those are all examples of clients of yours using yeah. virtual assistants. Yeah. yeah. I love I love the diversity there that you're basically saying, because I think a lot of maybe more traditional business owners, either brick and mortar or home service or even commercial service are newer to the idea of virtual assistant. It's the online folks that are like, oh, yeah, I get a virtual assistant because that makes sense. But really, when you say virtual assistant, what you're saying is hired a skilled person in this particular lane, which kind of just means you're hiring a person for your team. They just happen to be remote. <laughs> That's really all it is, right? Yeah. And then you don't have to provide, in most cases, a computer or anything like that. Some clients like to do that if they want to keep all their stuff in one place, but you don't sure. have to. They have their own equipment and they have, a lot of times they'll even have their own software, which is pretty right. cool too. Yeah, exactly. You're getting a team member that's in a box, ready to roll. <laughs> Exactly. Pop open the box, grow your business. Maybe that should be a slogan or a tagline. I don't know. I like it. I might use um, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's let's transition here to you. We'll get more to the virtual assistant here stuff in a, in a little bit as we talk about decisions. But I want to know for you, for Natalie, because you've got you know multiple businesses, you have kiddos, you have a very busy husband that I've learned about who's also a, a rock star and leading in his industry. So why why are you doing this why are you pushing so hard you know like in essence you really don't have to probably and so but you choose to why yeah so my story is actually pretty crazy so in 2015 you know me and my husband were trying for a family and we were struggling we went through multiple miscarriages unfortunately and it was it was just a really hard time in our life i was working full-time yeah. in a call center and I was finally pregnant in my safe zone of pregnancy. We were so excited. So I waited till that safe zone to tell my job. And then in return, they told me I had two days to give birth and then I would have to go back to work. Yeah. Wow. So, which is absolutely insane, right? And borderline illegal. But yeah, so that was really hard. I just felt a loss of control in that moment. And right. I no longer wanted to give a business that much control over my family that I was building. And so I immediately quit and I started looking for ways to work from home because I was about to have this brand new baby and I wanted to be able to be, it made me realize I wanted to be there to take care of that child for as long as it may need me, especially as a very high risk. So right. I went into that knowing that this child might have medical issues. So I discovered being a virtual assistant and I landed my first client in labor. And we also signed paperwork for our brand new house while I was in labor and we were at 32 weeks. So she was only wow. three pounds and she's now seven years old today. So I love it. Okay. So in that story, there's a couple of things here that are a little, you know, new to the show. So first off, thanks for sharing super vulnerable. Julie and I have gone through some of those same things, heart wrenching in those moments, honestly, especially if you've had multiple. So here you are and being told, you know, that actually here, here's the conundrum in my mind, because you just said you landed your first client signing papers in labor. So it wasn't actually that you weren't willing to work through pregnancy or afterwards. It was that someone told you that you had to. Yeah. And which is totally how entrepreneurs think. We're like, I'll do it for myself, but I'm not going to do it for you. So I love that part of just who you are and how you think, because I think that relates to everybody listening. But I also want to just point out this little thing here, and I'm curious on your opinion, is that as the, the listeners here today who have employees, some of them might be women who are pregnant or soon to be pregnant. And that moment is really special. And maybe you don't understand that as a guy or a guy who doesn't have a family yet. And so there's more than two days that are needed. But really what I heard you say was that, flexibility is what you needed. It wasn't that you weren't willing to like work or still be a contributing member. It just needed to be different during that time or flexible. What would you say to the entrepreneur listening right now who has a team and maybe is going to deal with this or in the member in the process of dealing this, 
how could they have done it differently? And you wouldn't be an entrepreneur today. You'd still be working there. Yeah. So the biggest thing was that that was a job I had to go to, right? It wasn't a work from home or anything like that. So that was the biggest thing. But the second is I hire a lot of moms and women that have had experiences just like myself. And what we have done is create an environment where they have tasks, they have to do's, they have due dates and, but they can work around their schedule, around their family schedule. So exactly. we, yeah, so when we have actually employee that had their family has been like constantly sick and she's just like, I'm so sorry. I there's like, she can't control that. So as a boss, I'm like, okay, well you can take, first off, I gave her a day to rest. So I was like, you're going to take this day off. You're going to take care of yourself. And then we're going to come back, see how you feel. And then we're going to make a plan to make it easier for you. And so we were able to do that by, you know, letting her have that day of rest. She came back more motivated and working better than ever just from yeah, one grateful. day. Yeah, yeah. One day of taking that, you know, stress off of her. And it was amazing the things that she accomplished afterwards and that she was able to do it not during the daytime. She could work. My employees can work any time of day. So yeah. that's one of the things that stands us apart as employers. And, you know, we understand I want them to have a family. I want because yeah. that that brings them happiness. It gives them motivated like they're working because they're trying to support their family. So I need to be supportive yeah. of their families. Yeah, absolutely. I think that you've you've painted a really great picture here to kind of piggyback on that for the listener's sake here is that it's 2023. So, you know, we're going to be 2024 here in a few months and it's time to get with it. Now, you made a really distinct point that some positions don't allow for remote work. Mm -hmm. But I want to challenge each listener right now with the way that you manage your team or your business. And rather than managing a physical location or managing a certain number of hours being worked, manage results or delivery, right? And that's in essence what Natalie is saying is like, look, in this position, whether it's on a job site or in marketing or remote, not remote, whatever it is, if possible, I understand that it's not possible all the time. I have retail franchises. <laughs> Unfortunately, that work can't be done remote. They got to go to the store and we got to make beautiful fruit baskets for people to send love and joy. But the reality is, is that I can still be flexible with certain things. And so what I'm challenging and, and also commissioning is to be flexible, not because you're soft and you're like, got to deal with the next generation, them gen, the, the millennials and Gen Xers. I just mean that like get with the times. It Family is important. It's, it's no longer just work 16 hours a day, even though maybe as an entrepreneur, we're more than willing to do that for me, even while I'm working 12, 16 hours a day, family is still important to me. So I got to work that in somehow too. I got to be flexible with myself even. So anything else that you would say on this, especially as a mom and a business owner? Yeah, it's just to have patience. You know, we all go through seasons of life. So there's sometimes that your staff isn't going to be performing 100% and you're going to notice it because when they're 100%, you're like, man, this is awesome. This is great. But it also shows us really easily, gives us that comparison of when they're not working at 100%. So I think just understanding what's going on in your employee's life is really right. important. And so that way you can give them the grace and maybe the support and tools. Maybe they need to be trained on something or maybe they need an assistant. We're doing that with one of our, one of my employees been with me a while and she's just grown so much as a person and her skill set that now she needs a personal assistant. So just kind of understanding what they need. And a lot of time your data with their time, like we record how long it takes to do a task. Sometimes that data tells me, because if it usually takes them five minutes and now it's taking them 10, there's something going on. And that's something I yeah. just might need to have a casual conversation about. Yeah, I loved how you snuck in that, you know, they might need support, which might equal calling you and getting a VA, but, but it's real. I, re I remember even working for a large company when I was building sales teams many years ago. And I was talking to a sales manager that just wasn't as organized as I was. We were doing the same job, both high performers, but he was just a complete mess. And, and I literally gave him this example. I'm like, look, dude, I know that you don't own this business, but like, if you were running it like a business, wouldn't you just hire an assistant to like do some of this admin stuff for you? He's like, I never thought about it like that. It's like, dude, you have an option. <laughs> you can either stay up till midnight out here at the office doing all the stuff that you hate to do that you're terrible at, 
or you can just find somebody to help you. I know that you work for this company and it, it would be a little bit weird for you to have an assistant of your own. But who says you can't? It just was a conundrum or, or like, a, like a mind-blowing moment for him and for anybody else that was listening. It was just like, whoa. It's because you're thinking like an entrepreneur at that point of like, how can I, ha- how can I offload things and only do the things that are important to me? So let's, let's transition a little bit to your story. You gave a little bit of background with the, st- with the job and into the business, but why, why eventually did you go from being a virtual assistant to running a firm of virtual assistants? I got too good at what I did. I got seven clients in one week and I was like, man, I have to hire help. But I always knew that I could turn it into an agency. And that was always kind of in the back of my mind. But I, my, my kids, like I had, I had two kids 12 months apart. So we talked about my daughter Well, my son came 12 months later was a preemie as well. And so we had a lot of medical expenses. And so that's why I was trying to get as many clients as I could that week was because yeah. I was trying to afford all of the medical expenses. My son was having surgery. And so I did it and I did it really well. And I kept up that momentum. I think it just kind of put me in a spot where I'm like, me and my family were, were kind of not, not safe zone again. I really need to create a plan yeah. to, you know, support them. And my husband, you know, he's amazing. He was working so many hours trying to work on his career and push it forward. And he was exhausted. He was even doing long care at night. So I know we mentioned my husband in the beginning, he works for the prison. And at that time he was in the classification department and trying to make his way up the scale. And so he would work eight to 10 hours a day at the prison, come home and mow yards for, you know, until the, it got dark out and then do it all again on the weekends. And yeah. it was exhausting. We were tired, we were stressed. And so that's when I was like, you know what? I can make this an agency, make it bigger than myself. And that way yeah. we can support my family, maybe even support other people's families as well. Yeah. Well, and that's obviously what it's turned into. You have, I think you said over 20 or maybe even over 30. Yeah. And which uh, now that you put that in perspective of 30 families, you know, from a, from a little situation of yours. And I only say, I say that to con- congratulate you, but for the listener, it's like, look, people people are really counting on us as entrepreneurs. Like we really make an impact. Like our businesses feed families. This is, this is like a really, really big thing. If you just stop and think about it for a half second, Natalie, I want to know, you've already talked about a little bit of, you know, I guess your story and you talked about some decisions that you've made in there, especially one to grow, but when you decide, okay, I'm going to do an agency and I'm going to take on some more clients. Obviously the, the focus there was maybe more marketing than the actual execution and getting new deals, new clients. So it was like a little bit different. What was a good decision that you made in that moment? You said, I'm gonna go an agency, I'm gonna build a business as opposed to just this little thing. What was something that you just did that you know that if everybody did this, it would help them also? Oh yeah, create SOPs, standard operating procedures, which we talked at the Gathering the Kings, which is pretty cool. But SOPs are, it's a document that says, everything that you do in your business, how you do it. I have one from the most simplest things like creating an email signature or so that way my whole team can be, have cohesive signatures or social media management. There's just so much that goes into it, how we talk to our clients, how we talk to leads or sales process and just taking maybe an hour or sometimes it's a little bit more, but say about an hour on average, create an SOP I am saving myself so much time, money, mistakes. And us as entrepreneurs, I feel like we don't take the time to create our SOPs because we see as it as like, you know, maybe like that work that's maybe beneath us because yeah. we're we're like, oh, we're dreamers, yeah. we're planners, you know, and we're always go, go, right. go. But we need to take that moment just to sit down and really think through our process. It's kind of goes to me, I align it with goal planning. So we sit down, we think about our goals, right? And we create our, our sub goals. I feel like SOPs are just as important because it's what you want out of your business specifically. Yeah. So if you're able to hand that over to a virtual assistant, you don't have to worry about taking tons of time to train them. They literally right. have what they need to do in this document. Or if you even, you don't have to write it out. You could do a Vimeo where it's like mm-hmm. your screen recording and just, you know, go over your process. And it saves so much time. And I just seen a huge increase in productivity with our SOPs. 
I agree. I was watching a video just maybe yesterday or day before, and the guy was like, look, I got an SOP for how to go to the bathroom, okay? I don't know if that was actually true. He, the way he said it, I believed him. However, I think the point that he was trying to make was, look, don't, don't, don't overlook even the smallest little thing. Give instruction to everything. Because like we use Culture Index, and typically entrepreneurs are going to be what we say right of the line A. They desire autonomy. And team members are going to be left of the line A. They're support. They're team players. They don't want to necessarily charge the hill and and come up with the plan. They need they want they need and want us to give them the plan. And so, actually, what what you're suggesting is that. But if we don't do that, we're actually not even equipping our people with what's necessary. A lot of times we come back and we're like, man, they're not doing it right. They're you know they're not implementing it exactly. how I would do it. That's because we're not giving them an SOP. Yeah, you didn't set them up for success. What what do you find as entrepreneurs right now? Because you gave a couple of pain points there of like, I don't have time for this or it's beneath me, whatever. Like, why aren't people doing this? If it's so easy, it's so simple and and it helps so much, which I agree with you, why why do people not do it? We're not putting it in our schedule. I think that it's something that we're not putting down in our task management software or our schedule. And it's just we're go, go, go. So a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we're putting out fires. We don't really take yeah. the time to sit down and plan our day out and then assign it out to implement it, right? And that's one of the biggest processes in business is that that's exactly the, the steps that you need to do. And I think we're, I always like to say, we're, we're, we need to work on our business, not in our business as entrepreneurs. Yeah. And so I think a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs, especially even in Gathering the Kings, I met a few that were always working in the business and they need to work mm -hmm. more on where they're not, in so many different fields and they're not in all their hands are in every single pot. They need to, you know, create yeah. staff that they can trust to handle those departments for them. So that way they yeah. can focus on the planning of the business. Hey, Kings and Queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, <laughs> all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms, or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think it's actually really encouraging because there might be, we have business owners of all sizes that listen, but for the for the new or smaller business owners listening, they maybe haven't hit the, you know, the 1 million mark. They're, to Natalie's point, there are multiple seven-figure business owners <laughs> who I know personally, as well as I'm sure there's hundreds of others who still try to do too much. And so it's a, it's this ever evolving thing of going, okay, here's this here's this department, I need to create a process, an SOP to go along with the process, and I need to give it to somebody. And in essence, that's really where a company like Natalie's comes in because, you know, a lot of times you can find somebody that has this expertise, you've got your SOP, you marry those two things together, that helps you move on from having your fingerprint in every single thing as the entrepreneur. That's scary. It costs money. Some, you know, like all these things are in our minds as entrepreneurs. That's why even at a larger scale where they have done it to a degree, but there's still other areas that they still got to get rid of. It's just difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult, but that's, that's why people struggle uh, with it is because uh, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. I think you did a great job of giving us the most pain points, the working on the business versus in the business. What would you say um, for you? Uh, you know, the, the working on the SOPs, like that's, that's big. And tactically, it's it once you once you've done it, then then you don't have to do it again. Really, is what you're saying. Yeah. Is there anything else in the business that pops up to your mind of like an action that's working on the business as opposed to in the business? Ooh, great question. I think goal setting. So I know I mentioned that kind of along with the SOPs, but not only goal setting. So I take it further. We share our goals with the team because they need to know what the goals are. I think we keep a lot of our goals to ourselves. Yeah. In our That's right. 
No. So actually, I had a really cool yeah. conversation with one of my team members last night. She's like, did you see our dashboard? Did you see our dashboard? I was like, yeah, I saw it. She's like, you hit your goal. <laughs> and that was such a cool thing, too, because as entrepreneurs, we don't celebrate. We have no one to really celebrate our wins if we're not That's sharing right. our goals. So I that she's congratulated me was like the best feeling because I don't really get that that much as a boss and as a CEO. So yeah, yeah, I absolutely love it. It keeps us all on the same page. Yeah, you're so right. You can do that with your team. Obviously, you know, places like Out in the Kings, you can do that with other owners. But it is special either way because we don't get it a bunch. And and here's actually what I found. Tell me if, if this is like you as well. I say, like, it's like my birthday. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. We hit the goal. It's like, we we don't really celebrate it. But when someone does notice, even just the acknowledgement of happy birthday or I saw you hit your goal. And that's it. Like, we don't have to have a party. But just the fact that you noticed and then said something, it actually means more than I'm willing to give it credit for. <laughs> Would you agree with that? Yeah, a hundred percent. It was just like it, it turned your whole day around. I had a really stressful day, and she told me this at like seven o'clock at night, which we don't usually work at seven. But she's also a friend, and so we were talking about it. And I was like, "Oh man, that just like it just lit my whole soul up." I went to bed and had the best night's sleep like that I've had all week, and it just it just really makes you feel good. And so imagine how we can make our teams feel like that too. So oh, we absolutely. share their goal and they, and we tell them, Hey, you helped us get to this goal. They're going to feel that too. So why not share and spread the joy? That's right. Love that. Okay. Let's flip over to the bad decision that you've made. Something that you've done that has caused chaos, havoc, loss of money, something juicy. Give it to us. Oh man. We just, yep. We're just recovering. We just got back in the green from going. So, you know, virtual assistants were usually retainers or hourly. We, I actually had a third company. It was a marketing agency and we went into one-time projects. Worst decision I ever made. We lost thousands of dollars doing wow. this. Lots of time, stress on my team. We were building summits and courses and things like that. And the people that wanted those things weren't necessarily making the money they needed to pay. And it just became this very big mess and financially in it it really hurt us for a while. It was a big setback. And so we went back to retainers at monthly recurring income, which is my favorite. And I kind of dissolved the marketing agent agency into kind of Nadora. So we still do, you know, all those things, but now we do it more on a retainer rate and we are finally recovering and doing great, but it was, it was scary there for a while. Yeah. What do you think the lesson in that is, is like, I mean, did you could you have known that that was a bad choice or inside of doing that business what was the specific like ooh i mean i heard you say one time money versus reoccurring money it is is that the takeaway here i think you should always have monthly recurring income in some way or another in your business because yeah. you get the client once and then they pay you every month that's like the gold mine for me and then if you turn that into passive like we've done with nador and our software system so they get access to our software and we get paid a monthly fee every month without doing anything. Yes, we're building right. things to help support them and be there for them and teach them the platform, sure. but not as much money as we would be working on a project. We're not trading time right. for money. So right. those are for wealth, I feel like are my big gold mines. But my, I think what we could have done better is that we didn't have, because I had multiple businesses, we didn't have the time or energy to really put maybe SOPs and boundaries in place with our clients. So we've just sure. talked about SOPs with our virtual assistants and our help, our team. But then with our clients, we need a system and a process that really aligns them and that they know it as well, which kind of goes into your contracts and such. And that was not in place. And so it allowed me, you know, we spent more time than we charged. And that's where I lost the money. Yeah, yeah. I think that there are some business owners listening to you right now going, oh, I can't do monthly recurring. But my challenge to them is that just sit down and think about it because <clears throat> there's a lot of different businesses that do one-time garage door installations uh, that can create a repair service contract and, or, or something of the like. Like just sit down, think about what the, what the monthly recurring service or quarterly, whatever the, whatever the time frame is. Um, cause you're right. As long as the value is there, people stay because why would they want to change if, as long as the value is still there, you know? 
you can also build, right? Your your baseline grows. Like, okay, we're at, you know, 2000 a month, 5000 a month, 20000 a month, 800 a month. It's like, okay, well, we can grow on this because we know that based on churn rates, like, as again, if you have a good product, then, you know, typically people aren't going to leave or at least the masses are going to stay. So you have uh, an ability to grow uh, exponentially. What would you say about, I'm going to take it back to family real quick. A uh, little bit of a left curve, but not really since we've already mentioned it and you've already, it's a big part of your story. I, I use the word obsession. And I think that not every entrepreneur relates with the word obsession, but the ones that are like me definitely do. <laughs> and we've talked about going all in, like you've gone all in on multiple things in your business. I know you're obsessed, but the reality of it is, is that most entrepreneurs, at least good people that I've met want to also be obsessed with their marriage, with their family, their kids, their, you know, other things in life. How have you practically been able to obsess in those areas at the same time? as obsessing and building, you know, these businesses? Yeah. So that's a great question. Cause it kind of goes back into a little deeper into my background. So I'm actually a former foster kid. So I wanted wow. a family that was like, I wanted, you know, that family that sits down at table and eats dinner and I wanted movie nights and I wanted to go and do fun things and go to fairs and carnivals and and I built that in my, and I also really wanted to see, I never really saw a healthy working relationship and I wanted it. I wanted a marriage that yeah. they were best friends and partners and, you know, could laugh at and no one understand why they're laughing. Like I saw a couple once and I always remember them in my head. I can't remember their names, but I remember them laughing and no one knew what they were laughing about. And I am very, very blessed to have a marriage like that. Of course, it wasn't easy. We kind of talked about, you know, some of the hurdles we've had. We've had our children go through, through surgery. We've had two preemies and so much more. My husband is now an assistant warden for the Florida Department of Corrections. And so he does not have an easy job in me having a business, but also being the main caretaker for our kids because he does work at the prison so many hours. It's hard. It is not easy, but I feel yeah. like because we went through those times of with our kids being little, we became really good partners. And so we learned how yeah. to, you know, it's a it's a give and take, right? And so when he's really stressed out, I step in. And when I'm stressed out, he steps in. And so you might ask yourself, what happens when you're both stressed out? And that's when we get a little lazy, maybe with our parenting. Like one day we said, you know what? No homework. <laughs> We're just going to have fun as a family. It just, you know, screw responsibility yeah. so that was kind of what you know sometimes we do when we're just burnt out and because it's best for our family in the long yeah. run i mean one missed homework isn't yeah. gonna make or break our family so <laughs> but last night was actually yeah. we kind of had that again i was really i told you i was really stressed out and so my husband took over homework and bedtime routine he actually got home early which is crazy never happens and i was able to have that best night's sleep and relax and it's just knowing what your partner needs and then acting yeah. on it. because i think it's, it's two things we don't always act on it and right away sometimes we'll say oh we'll do that later no act now <laughs> yeah yeah i i think what you've given is actually a, a really great formula julie and i use you know, in essence, the same thing, but I want to encourage the listener because you gave, you gave that formula in the situation of like, ah, and then he, he comes in, which is beautiful. You, you have to already have it set in place for that to happen. Because in that moment, if you don't, if you don't know his needs and he doesn't know your needs and you don't know how to recognize them in the place of stress or chaos, how can they jump in? And, and then what happens, unfortunately, is that you're wanting them to jump in they're not paying attention. They don't understand. And then so now there's resentment and just a downward spiral of all kinds of other emotions. But that same formula that you gave, even on a daily basis when there is no chaos, which is something that Julie and I have really been trying to press into because we, like you, have had a lot of stressful moments, kids and, and businesses and stuff that's happened and, and you know you can't do anything about it, but you keep moving. But when things are really great and I'm still paying attention to her needs, like even trying to like go towards like, what does Julie need today? And like, again, like you said, don't just think about it, take action. And that doesn't mean flowers, although that could be something, but it might just mean a word of affirmation. It might just be, you know, cleaning up 
an area of the house that I nor- woman normally don't, but I see that it needs to be done and I just do it because I know it's going to help or whatever, whatever the scenario is. I think we're saying the same thing. I just want to encourage people to be able to do that even on a regular basis because that builds the moment in the chaos. Would you agree? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this huge thing. Like you said, it could be like five minutes, maybe putting dishwash- dish dishes into the dishwasher. You know, that actually helps a lot when we, when we I know women, especially when we see an empty sink, we're like, oh, this is amazing. So just the smallest yeah. things, you know, you might be really tired and you see your spouse struggling as well. Just take a couple minutes and I bet you that your spouse is going to see that and then do something nice for you when you're struggling. Because we, we see that. Yeah. We know each other, right? I've known my husband eight years now. And so we know, you know, each other's, I can just see his face, right? He'll walk in and I was like, I don't even have to ask. I just know. So that's, you know, just be really aware of your partner because it is, it's a partnership. We need to, you know, we're the base of our family and to be strong for our kids or maybe even if we have relatives that are sick and or older, you know, we're the base. So we need to take care of ourselves and our marriage first. Yeah. Yeah. The marriage first piece. I think a lot of people talk about it or maybe think that like, oh yeah, that my marriage, that's important, but it's easy to get swept away with kids, businesses, tasks, even other people. And uh, yeah, I just, I just give one last encouragement there that what Natalie is saying is just so real and it doesn't have to be a big lift. It's just intentionality is really what the word is. Just slow down enough to see the other individual help out. And it really does fill the love tank depending upon, you know, what that task is for sure. What would you say is, you know, something for you? I mean, you kind of already mentioned, you know, around, you know, the virtual assistants and software. What is another resource, maybe even like a book or a podcast or something that you've been able to get quality information or growth from as an entrepreneur? Oh, there's so many. I am a reader at heart. I read actually over 300 books a year. And so my, wow. yeah, my Amazon Kindle insights are off the chain. I have read a, a at least some sort of book every day for two years now straight every day. So I love books. I think it depends on what area, right? So for financial, I love Profit First. It's an amazing book. If you're just starting a business, I like Start Ugly by Chris. I can never pronounce his last name, but I think it's Camistos. And he's the founder of PodFest actually. So which is a really cool place if you're into podcasting. And then for business, I actually, when I first started out, I purchased Shaleen Johnson from Beachbody. She actually has a business course called Marketing Impact Academy. Wow. And I investing in that was probably one of the smartest things because it taught me business basics, but also, you know, getting like your email marketing in place, doing, you know, your freebie, right. your paid products, your, you know, all your different structures of your business. And that's what set me apart from yeah. other virtual assistants because most of them didn't know about business. So yeah, those are just some yeah. of the resources that really helped me along the way. That's awesome. That last little tagline that you said, as far as the others didn't know about business, there's so many entrepreneurs listening right now that they're in industries like virtual assistant, like contractors, like, you know, marketing, you know, folks that just put themselves up on Fiverr. Nobody knows about business. Everybody knows the trade. Nobody knows about business. And so if you're listening to Natalie clearly here, what she's saying is learn the business skill sets to grow your business not necessarily just the trade. Um, That's the biggest differentiator. Natalie, I have one last question for you. You ready for it? I'm ready. You have the opportunity, let's say, to go back in time and talk to the younger Natalie. Tap her on the shoulder and you whisper in the ear. What do you tell her? She's going to get everything she dreamed of. I think I just remember myself as a little kid just wanting that that family and, you know, wanting consistent income and, you know, you know, the, I always pictured a car because that was like freedom to me because I couldn't choose where I could go. And so that, and then the dog and the fence in yard, and I have that now. I have an amazing little lab named Luna, who is my best friend. And we, it's just, I'm, I'm just so proud of, you know, of myself, of where I've come along the ways. And I got every single hurdle I feel like thrown out at me and able to just like persevere. So that's really cool. I think that's a really great message. I loved how you even said, I'm proud of myself. That, that seems 
or that tickles the ears a little different if you haven't ever really sat down and thought about whether you're proud of yourself or not. But I hope that you heard Natalie because the emotion behind knowing where you've come from, seeing where you're at, also with the ability to see that you're still got plenty to go. It's not anxiousness, it's gratefulness, right? Yeah. Good stuff. Natalie, how can we find you? Number one, everybody listening needs a VA, everybody. We already know that, but you, like you said, give an opportunity not only for VA, but to have a project manager that can manage maybe even multiple sets of our businesses that can really help us out. How can we find you for that? Or if we just want to network with you as an entrepreneur, how can we find you? Sure. So for virtual assistants, you can head on over to ngvirtualassistant.com. Connect us with us there, schedule a discovery call, and we'll be happy to help you and figure out what your needs are and if we're a fit. And then uh, on social media, it's Natalie Guzman. So you can find me on Instagram and I'm always doing crazy things on TikTok. So always happy to, you know, talk with you guys and hopefully I'll give you guys some good tips on the social media platforms. I love posting about things that you can do better in your business or software as you can use. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, take, take Natalie up on those uh, opportunities to connect. We'll put all that in show notes as well. Natalie, I don't, I don't just say I'm looking forward to connecting with you again because I know we're going to connect again. We've already started an incredible relationship. I'm sure we're going to use your services. In fact, I think even some of my clients have already started to use your services. So I know there's going to be long-term connection here. And so we appreciate you not only for coming, but sharing. I think that your story is pretty powerful. So again, thank you for that. And we wish you nothing but success in all that you have your hands to and in your family. Thank you so much, Chaz. I had a blast. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight, and nine-figure business owners, is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.